Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel. We're gonna go to, we're gonna go ahead and continue more with the bootstrap videos. If you're interested in learning any other language like Python or HTML, the links for the playlist are gonna be in the description below, or I think they already are in the description below. If not, let me know and I'll add it. Um, because I know a lot of y'all are asking, do you make this? Do you make this? Do you make this? Um, I should have it. If not, um, leave it in the comments down below what you want me to do. And I'll be happy to go ahead and make it. So, yeah. Let's just get started there. Also, if you have any questions that, that come into your mind throughout the video, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. I will answer them as soon as possible. So that you can fully understand me. Also, check out all the code for this video it will be in the link in the description below. Um, it's under a GitHub link, so go ahead over there and check it out. So, before I start, a lot of y'all might ask why this time I chose to do Doctype HTML at the beginning instead of the regular HTML. Well, the reason why I'm using Doctype HTML with an exclamation mark instead of the regular HTML tag is because the doc type at the beginning, the exclamation mark doc type, it tells the browser what version of the coding language you're using. So for example, this time we're coding in Bootstrap and we're gonna tell the, pro, um, the, the browser that we are programming in Bootstrap 4. So that's why we use doc type, to let the browser know what um, language, we're, what version of the programming language we're programming in. Okay, so I guess let's get started with bootstrap spinners. First things first, like always, um, in every single coding language, there is always a must have in every single file you execute or compile. I've been calling it execute, but I know a lot of people like to call it compiling. Compiling and executing both mean the same thing. They don't differ, but yeah, I just like to call it executing the code. So anyway, with that being said, um, we're gonna, to, um, it's really important that every single um, programming language they have like a must-have like like there's always like specific um, paragraph or a specific amount of code that must be present in every single coding language in bootstrap this is called the CDN it must be present every time you do it so yeah just a refresher so now I think we're ready to go ahead and get started so we're gonna do a spinner what a spinner essentially is, is it, it's kind of like a loop. It kind of loops around in a circle and it just keeps going. So in order to make a spinner, we're gonna make like the simple, what I like to call the OG spinner. The first thing we need to do is we need to create a class for the spinner. So we're gonna go ahead and create a class for the spinner. We're gonna name it spinner border. This is going to create the spinner for us. If you don't have this, you won't be able to create the spinner. After this, we can just go ahead and end it. And then we're done. Also, um, let's add a container class. That way it can organize our information, I guess you can say. Yeah, let's go ahead and add a container. That way it can um, center our information or it will format it, whatever you like to call it. Let's go ahead and put that down there. Okay, I think from there we're good to go, so let's just save it. Let's just save it and go ahead and reload. So the browser will show a spinner. So that's exactly what a spinner does. It just rotates. Um, it's just an animated loop or a GIF that that just displays on the browser. So it's just a repeat, repetitive GIF. It just keeps on going. I find that pretty cool. Cool. It just loops or does whatever animation repetitively. And that's all what it does. So now what we're gonna do to this spinner is we're not gonna change the code. Instead, we're gonna enhance it so that it does a little bit of some different stuff. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the color of the spinner. This is actually the most easiest thing ever. Before I do that, let me make sure I indent just like that. It's always good you indent your line of code. I didn't do it this time. Apparently still work, but make sure you indent your code. The reason why we indent our code is because um, this is the information that goes under this. So, so we're gonna make a spinner under the container class. And that's why we kind of indent it to show that this is going inside that. So with that being said, let's continue. So what well, all we need to do to make it um, a color, the color that we want 
is we need to make a contextual class. The first thing you need to add in your contextual class is what are you going to change to this spinner. In this case, we are changing the spinner itself. So we're going to add text. You want to use text when you want to change the spinner itself or you want to change the um, element itself. And then after that, we need to do our preferred color in one of the bootstrap color codes. I'm going to do danger because I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all know that red is my favorite color. So let's go ahead and save it right there and the browser should show a red spinner just like that. Pretty easy, pretty simple, just like that. So this right here is called a contextual class. A contextual class will essentially, it will kind of enhance what, what we just did. We made a thing. So it tells what is being changed. In this case, we're changing the color. So we're changing the color and we're asking and we're telling the browser, we want to change to the spinner itself. And then we're going to tell the browser what color we want. In this case, we want red. So it's going to change the spinner to the color red. And now the browser will show a color spinner. Um, whatever your color you put, you can even change the color. I'm not going to get much into it. And now the browser is going to show a different color. So yeah. If you don't like this animation and you're just not a huge fan of it, there's another animation out there for you. And it is called Spinner Grow. What this is going to do is that it's going to make the spinner kind of go. It's going to like animate in a growing kind of way. Let me show you. And all it's going to do is it's going to like animate it in a growing type of way. I like the um, original border animation better than the grow animation, but everybody has different preferences. So it's just honestly up to you which one you want. But if you know, if you didn't like that, then luckily there's something else out there for you. And that is the spinner grow. So that's a different kind of animation that's there for you. If we add grow to the end of the spinner, it changes the animation and it will animate it like a growing animation. We can even change the size of the spinner by adding small. So we can go ahead and go into the spinner grow, like what we just wrote down. Then we can say spinner, let's say grow, and then let's make it small. So what that's going to do is that it's going to make the spinner smaller. And then after that, we're good to go and we're done. Um, a lot of y'all are probably going to ask, why can't we make it large? And we just can't. It won't work, unfortunately. And if you want to make it bigger, you have to manually add the size dimensions within the um, spinner border or the spinner grow class. So what we did here as a recap, first we named the spinner grow class. This will tell that we want a spinner with a growing animation. Next, we want to specify the size of it by repeating the spinner grow and then adding this preferred size, which in this case is small. Keep in mind, large won't work. And if you want large, you're gonna have to specify the dimensions. So let's go ahead and save it and then let's reload. And now it will show a smaller spinner. If you want to, if you want to know how to make your spinner bigger and more visible, I have that code in the um, GitHub link in the description below. If you go to the spinners5.html on that website, um, you'll find how to make the um, spinner larger. Um, I have the code out there for you to make the um, spinner larger, but I'm not going to go deep into it in this video. So lastly, what we're going to do is that we're just going to combine the aspect of making a bootstrap button with the aspect of making a bootstrap spinner. To do this, we first need to add a bootstrap button. So in order to do this, yeah, we just need to add a button. After we add a button, we need to add a class and then we need to say BTN. BTN is short for button. This tells the browser that we're making a button. Then we need to specify the color. The color will tell the browser, obviously, what color we want. I'm going to say I want a yellow button. After that, we then need to add a span class. A span class kind of combines everything in together. It combines all the classes. It sort of like combines it together. And it's also the information that will go in the button. So yeah, like what, it, like what the reference says. It can be useful when used with global attributes and all that stuff. So let's go in and let's type in class and then we're going to um, we're going to tell the browser what type of spinner we want. I'm going to do a spinner border 
Um, but this time the border might be bigger than the button. The button might be too small and the border might be, or the spinner might be too big. So in, in this case, to solve that problem, I'm gonna make the spinner smaller. So let's go ahead and make it smaller. And then we're gonna end it there. Let's go ahead and end that there. And then lastly, um, we wanna add the text. So um, I'm gonna say loading. So this is whatever text you want to show on the button. This will tell the browser whatever text you wanna show. So in this case, I wanna show loading or whatever. And then after that, we'll end it. I think I made it. Okay, we'll end the button. And then we'll go ahead over here. And then we'll add the, what is it, the span. And there we go. We can see, go ahead and save it and then reload it. And there we have it, we have a spinner combined with the button. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, um, be sure to leave a like down and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Um, it, it really helped this video a lot. Also, this video did take me a couple tries to make. So anyway, um, if you had any questions, also be sure to leave them down in the comments below. Don't be afraid to ask any questions. I'll answer them as soon as possible. And with that being said, peace out.